so. Thank you for giving me time for this interview. Of course. Um, so I guess I want to start off by saying, you know, you and Jack have worked together before. So I'm curious how that relationship spawned Goosebumps. And, you know, was that a collective thing you both said, we have to do this? Or did somebody come to the project first? Uh, I, I, got, I, got, I came to the project first. Um, I've been meaning to talk to Jack about this. I feel like we need to take turns. Like this, now it's his turn to get a movie that I can jump on. <laughs> the movie before this, he got, and I I jumped on after he got, it. and this one I got, and he jumped on after I got. It. Uh, yeah, I, I I mean honestly, I went in basically just auditioning to direct the movie. Okay. And that was hard because I had to, you know, do this big pitch and presentation. There were other directors trying to get it also. And, um, so, you know, getting through that was a big deal. And then um, there's a lot of work to do on the script. And then once that was there, it was about, you know, sending the script to Jack and hoping he would want to do it. Hoping he yeah. Was that an easy sell, I guess? Or? It, it's been easier <laughs> over the years. Okay. So now I have a random question. Um, it's said that George A. Romero wrote a draft for a Goosebumps film in the 90s, and he finished it. Is so that true? I was just going to, I was asking you, is that something You need something to ask Carl Stein. Okay. I was a child in the 90s. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> did he really? I, I was curious if you knew about this and if that I played did. into your... I did. You're the your first one who told me. I'll it must have been a zombie. Own. It must have been the Graveyard Ghouls, right? I who else gonna, would do... Who else would do that? I... I do not know, but that I'd be fascinated to know the answer to that. You have to ask him. I, I will ask him later. I absolutely will. It's been in okay. development for ever. So, oh, I know. know. Tim Burton tried to do yeah, it. Yeah, you know? it was. So just, how did how did you pitch it then? How did you actually get to do this? How did you convince them? I didn't. They they uh, Sony Studios Columbia Pictures had it, and they had sort of. Um, had the idea already. I don't honestly know who had the idea of having Arl Stein as a character in the movie and having the books come to life. That was always there before I got okay. involved. So I heard about that. And then um, at the time, I was just really into figuring out um, an excuse to do an old Hamlin film. I mean, it's really just one big excuse for me to do a big nostalgic tribute to an Hamlin movie. But, uh, and it just kind of got lucky. And so when I heard about that, I was like, oh, that's it. This could be all these movies that I've loved. Right. You know, kind of jam-packed into uh, a Goosebumps film. And that was my pitch. And they, and they, they dug it. They, and it worked. they dug it. And, uh, <laughs> and here we are. So you were managing a lot of monsters in this film. You know, you're playing with all of Stein's characters. Um, how did you kind of delegate who gets to be the head monsters and who kind of gets pushed to the back? And was that a hard process? or? Um, it was a hard process. I mean, I mean, the truth is, a lot of it comes down to money and practicality and you know what but what's we the had easiest to, monster to put what's on what's the easiest what's the least you know expensive to here's the most expensive and right. we're gonna buy it by getting rid of some of these guys in the middle you know but we had a war room at our production offices with, with like it was like a Wikipedia of goosebumps monsters and breakdowns of how to make them and what would be involved is a lot of detail that we just kind of whittled away until we had our and we ha ended up having like over 60. Yeah. I was going to awesome. say, you guys had a ton We had a ton, yeah. Um, so, then let's go... Let's see. So was Slappy an easy choice then for your... Slappy was in. Okay. I mean, that, Slappy, there was, that was a no-brainer. I mean, Slappy, uh, Im immediately I jumped on that, and I had uh, a team build an actual ventriloquist stuff because I wanted right. it to be practical. I was going to say, that's one and of the only monsters be, we see. Yeah, and, it, and, it had, and, and, and the performance of it is critical. Right. So it really, like, a lot of very high-end um, craftsmen came together to make that thing, including the puppeteer. I did auditions for the puppeteer. Did you? Yeah, I mean, people came in from everywhere, from the, like the top guys to a kid who drove himself in from Alabama, and that kid is the guy who got the job. It's he an was, honor to be slappy. <laughs> no, but he was that good. And we were we were on the fence, and I was just like, "This is something about this guy. He just he just nails it. It's amazing." So he uh, Slappy's kind of physicality changed from the TV show. Was that something you guys did purposely to kind of differentiate from the show? Or? You know, I never really looked at the show. Okay. I mean, I, I I read through the books. I didn't want to be connected to because I felt the movie was its own thing, okay. and it wasn't. Um, you know, the show captured the books because it's the it's an anthology yeah. series. So. That works perfectly in TV, but in the movie, because it's a meta idea and it's not one of the books, it just—it was really more about you know capturing the 
spirit of those movies. Yeah. Okay. So I guess my last question is, you do, you know, all your films to this point have been family films and, you know, these children's films. So yeah. I'm just curious, do you have a strive to ever want to do something sort of more mature, we'll call yeah. it, you know? I always do. I feel like, uh, I, this is all in my own head because no one notices, but I am chipping away. I feel like this movie gets me that much closer to PG-13. <laughs> it does, that is true, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm slowly trying to get to at least one rating above PG. That's my goal. Do you have any ideas maybe for a film that you would want to do in that nature, or is it Not just Not this week, I'm just yeah. I'm so nervous and anxious about uh, the movie coming out. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I write all the time. I right. make a living more as a writer, but um, you never know. I mean, it's, it's tricky out there. They're making less and less movies in this particular range. I was going to say, I haven't really seen a family horror movie in such a long time that it's successful. Yeah, you may never if we don't get this one right. But yeah, uh, yeah. I think you've done a pretty good job. It's pretty right. rare, dude. I mean, there's the big tentpole movies and um, I'm definitely never considered for those. And then there's lower budget horror stuff. But yeah, in this this family space, it's just getting it's shrinking. Do you see Goosebumps being a tentpole if it can reach that level? You know, is this something that they never would... a tentpole? But it was always intended to be a general audience movie because that's for me what I remember of Goonies, Back to the Future, E.T. All these fabulous films from back in the day were never family movies. They were yeah. big general audience movies. They didn't even think about it like that. No. They were movies, and we've lost that along the way. And so this was sort of part of this film, which is fun, is sort of a throwback to making that wider audience thing. So it's not like, I mean, I don't know even what a tentpole is outside of Marvel and Star Wars, but the... It's uh, all you get. It's all you get. But, <laughs> but in terms of like a general audience film, I think we really, like, man, we really just hit it, the tone of it, well. I'm excited. The Monster Squad of our generation, maybe? The Monster Squad, another end. Written by Shane Black. Did you yes, know that? Yes, it was. Absolutely. He's the weapon guy. Shane wrote that. Not yeah. Just leave the weapon. He's well, the... <laughs> I mean, but, no, I know. yes. I'm Listen. older than you, so no, he's the hey, weapon guy. Trust me, big legal weapon. Yeah. But hey, uh, congratulations on the movie and best of luck. Thanks, man. This will turn into.